Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Bob Mosley. I'm the um, volunteer services manager at the Hospice of the Chesapeake. Um, today, as part of our celebration for Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day, I have the pleasure of interviewing uh, two very special guests. Uh, John Astle is a former senator and delegate from the state of Maryland. He's a retired Marine Corps Reserve Colonel. Um, he won two Purple Hearts and many air medals for his service in Vietnam. And also George Forrest, who's a retired Army Lieutenant Colonel and former Chief Administrator for St. Mary's County. Uh, John retired from the Marine Corps Reserve after 30 years of service. He earned 34 Air Medals and two Purple Hearts for his service in Vietnam. And George retired from the Army after 21 years of service, earned a Silver Star for heroism, two Bronze Stars for valor, and the Combat Infantryman Badge. So good morning and welcome to both of you and thanks for, for being with us today. Good morning. Good morning, thank you for the invite. You're welcome. Um, so before we speak with each of them on their experience and honor all those who served during the Vietnam War, um, I'd like to share with you why the Hospice of the Chesapeake believes so passionately in providing unique service to our veteran patients throughout the communities as we, uh, that we serve in Anne Arundel, Prince George's and Charles County. In early 2011, the hospice joined the We Honor Veterans movement, uh, given that close to 25% of our patients at any given time uh, are veterans of military service. Um, our mission is to serve veterans through the challenges that they may be facing from illness, isolation or traumatic life experience. These unique experiences significantly impact them as they live with a serious illness and experience the end of life. Uh, equally as important is the unique family experience and how that defines the grieving process. By recognizing the unique needs of Americans, veterans and their families, we believe we can learn how to accompany and guide our veteran patients through their life stories towards a more more peaceful ending through grateful acknowledgement, respectful inquiry, and compassionate listening. So in 2015, this led us to John, Senator John Assel, who passionately helped us establish legislation that created Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day in the state of Maryland on March 30th of each year to commemorate the sacrifices of the Vietnam veterans. Uh, this led to Governor Larry Hogan signing his first piece of legislation as governor, officially marking March 30th as Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day annually in the state of Maryland. Um, prior to the COVID pandemic, we were able to host several in-person events, grateful, grateful, gratefully acknowledging hundreds of Vietnam veterans. And now, we're, unfortunately, we're going to have to do this virtually this year. Hopefully next year we'll be back to live. So we're now going to hear from each of our guests on their experience and what this day means to them. John, you've been a longtime supporter of the hospice, which we greatly appreciate. Can you describe how your relationship with the organization helped inform your efforts on behalf of Vietnam veterans, particularly with regards to the introduction of the bill that established uh, Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. I, I'd been associated with hospice since it got started in Anne Arundel County. Uh, I was in the legislature for 36 years total, so there are a lot of things that got started while I was there. But um, during the, the latter period, uh, I was approached by one of the people in hospice uh, who asked me if I would come to a couple of those uh, uh, honoring ceremonies that uh, took part or took place uh, in your organization. And I did, and I was impressed with what it meant to those individuals who were looking at the, the end of life. So taking my, my own experience, um, coming home from Vietnam to a country that really held no respect for us, any of us, and I think George probably experienced the same thing as well. Um, this was an opportunity to put a spotlight on the fact that we did some good things. It's often said, we weren't the greatest generation, but we were the greatest of our generation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I happened to be at the time, the only 
a Vietnam veteran in the Senate of Maryland. Mm. And I was asked if I would um, author legislation that would create uh, Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. And I was really pleased and happy to do that. Once I got the bill drafted and introduced, every member of the Senate wanted to be a co-sponsor. And then the House found out that we had a bill in the Senate and they wanted a bill in the House and every member of the House uh, signed on. So it was a clear indication that at least in the legislative bodies, people recognized uh, those of us who served in Vietnam and, and what we had accomplished. And so I was, I was proud to have put the bill in. Um, as you said, the governor signed it. It was kind of out of the ordinary. Normally bills don't get signed until June, but the governor signed this bill the very day that it was enacted. Uh, and then we had the first Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans event. So that's kind of the story. Great, great. that's that's great. So you, you mentioned a little bit about um, your experience when you returned from Vietnam and how you weren't, you weren't welcomed back for the most part. Um, did, that, did that contribute to, um, to you sponsoring this bill as well? Those, those exact experiences where you weren't welcomed back and wanted to do something for, on that behalf. Well, I just wanted uh, by that bill to make sure that Vietnam veterans were recognized by the society of today. Um, it's true. I experienced it. I'm sure George did as well. But uh, I was uh, going to the Los Angeles airport to get a flight back to the East Coast and uh, a woman spit on me in, in the concourse of the airport. Uh, that was the kind of response that we got. Um, <clears throat> some guys were told not to wear their uniforms, just to uh, come home in civilian clothes. So it was right. a difficult time. Right, right. George, um, what did it mean to you personally that your friend helped enact this bill? And now that we have a day that recognizes your service in Vietnam as well. Well, John has been um, the, the drum major in, in leading the, 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 the challenge that a lot of guys are still wrestling with uh, as a result of their, their experience in Vietnam. And, and I am just so fortunate that, that John has befriended me and has invited me to participate in, in, in the legislation. I, in fact, I was invited to the signing by John. Um, and, but, 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 you know, Bob, in hindsight, Vietnam had some advantages for us because the result of the way John and I and my fellow veterans were treated uh, woke America up to the fact that they needed to appreciate the, the service. I tell you, as a veteran of the Afghanistan campaign myself, I appreciate exactly what John sponsored and what not only what he did to ensure that Vietnam veterans are recognized for what they did, but also for paving the way for the rest of us. You know, you, you, you made it better for everyone that followed you, which is in itself something to say, I think. It, Bob, in that regard, is there a message that you both would like to send to fellow Vietnam veterans on this uh, anniversary of the signing of this bill? Well, I'd just like to say that, uh, you know, this, I think, highlights the solidarity that we're looking for in our society, that um, it puts it on the stage so that everybody knows this is the day for those of us who wore the uniform and served in Vietnam to be recognized for our service. And I think it's important. Thank you both very much for being here today and taking the time out of your schedules to talk with us. Uh, and then... On behalf of the Hospice of the Chesapeake, we wish to recognize and give thanks for all of those who served during the Vietnam War, including those who were wounded, gave their lives, or went missing in action. Please join me in a moment of silence as we give respect, admiration, and thanks to all the patriotic men and women who sacrificed so much in service to their nation. Thank you. <laughs> 